Okay, so today I'm going to talk to you about transgender. So Walker Christina Bistuni says, for people who aren't transgender, it's not something that you really understand. So she puts it in a way that maybe you can. So imagine you're born a woman who is attractive and feminine, and one day you wake up and you're a man. You can no longer dress the way you want to, you can't be feminine, and you have to act like a man. Every time you look in the mirror, every time you get dressed, and every time you come in contact with someone, you know that your inner self isn't what you are on the outside. And that stress just keeps building up and up and welcome to being transgender. So I'm going to talk to you about what transgender is and what they have to go through, um, how society kind of views people who are transgender, and what we can do. According to the site, American Psychological Association, transgender is an umbrella term for persons whose gender identity, gender expression, or behavior does not conform to that typically associated with their gender. So that means like they can cross-dress and they can choose to go through the gender reassignment surgery, but not all do. Um, they're called gender non-conforming if they don't, they just kind of dress as a woman or a man and they act as one. If they do choose to go through the um, gender reassignment surgery, there's a couple things they have to do. So they have to go and get counseling. Um, if they choose to get the gender reassignment surgery, they have to have at least two um, psychologists like, like write a letter saying that yes, they can do this, yes, it's what they want, and it would make them better. Um, to get this, the surgery, they have to go through hormone treatments. So for boys, they have to take testosterone blockers and estrogen, and women have to take um, testosterone. And so after, if they get the surgery, men, if they want to, they can get the breast augmentation if they want. Um, estrogen kind of affects them, they do develop their own press, but if they feel like they should be bigger, they can do that. Um, women, they have to do a breast reduction. They have to completely get rid of them and reconstruct to look like a man, a man with chest. And they have to go through vocal training, but not all do. So you will get some people who are transgender who sound very masculine or very feminine, even though they're not one of those two. And for a male to female, they have to get Facial, they can get facial feminization, so they would round out the face a little bit and they go in and they do a trachea shave, so they get rid of the Adam's apple. So, so for my interview, um, this person decided to remain anonymous. So I asked him about when did he know he was transgender. He said about or 14 or 15, but he always kind of didn't feel right being a boy. Like he knew something wasn't right. He didn't like the way he looks. He still doesn't like the way he looks. Um, who did he first come out to? He came out to his girlfriend. She was very accepting, and he still hasn't come out completely. Um, his girlfriend and a couple other people know, but that's about it. He's afraid to come out to his family because he doesn't know how they're going to take it and whether they're going to accept him. And I asked him if he wanted to go through the surgery, and he says he does because it feels like what he should do, and he feels like he'd be happier that way. So now that we've talked about what um, transgender is, I'm going to talk to you about kind of how society views it. So USA Today writer Sharon Jason, in her article, What Transgender Means and How Society Views It, transgender, um, there, it's called gender dysphoria. It's not a disorder, but it's in the book of disorders. We don't actually know what it is, what causes it. So it's something that we're not really sure about. And when we're not really sure about something, we don't always accept it. So um, Sharon Jason quotes Nicole Joseph, a clinical psychologist who specializes in treating transgender individuals. She says that her patients compare coming out as transgender as coming out as gay in the 80s. So it's something that's not quite accepted. It's something that's kind of hard for them. So um, I have some statistics. Um, so I got these statistics from National Center for Transgender Equality. 
and they did a survey of 6,436 transgender individuals. And so I have mistreatment at school. 53% male to female experience being mistreated, and that includes bullied by students, bullied by teachers and staff, and um, it includes sexual harassment, just verbal harassment. 65% um, of females and males, 59% of all transgender, and 70% of gender nonconforming, so the people are cross dressed. Um, family rejection. 45% of males to female were rejected by their family, 40% of female to male, 43% of all, and 33% of gender nonconforming. And discrimination in hiring. So they don't they see them and they don't get jobs. But 55% of male to female experience this discrimination, 40% of female to male, 49% of all. 32% of non gender non-conforming and denied equal treatment in places such as restaurants and hotels. So they weren't allowed to get things, they weren't allowed to be there and they were harassed. 44% overall and of the 44%, 44% um, of male to female, 50% female to male, 46% all and or 53, 46% uh, of gender non-conforming, and 53% of all reported were just verbally harassed in public. So that's quite a lot of people that have experienced being harassed because their gender identity doesn't match their actual gender. So now that we've talked about how society views it, what can we do? So be educated. Know your stuff, know what they have to go through and be accepting. If someone does come out to you, don't tell them it's wrong, because that's the last thing they want to hear. Um, some organizations that we have here at Trans Ohio, and they have volunteer opportunities. You can go to their website, and you can give all your information, and they'll say, hey, you can volunteer at this event or this event. Um, we have Stonewall Columbus, and they're like an LGBT community, and they also have similar things. They focus more on just all, other than so all the LGBT here. Um, and so yeah. if you want to learn more, here's some things that I would check out. The National Center for Transgender Equality has a lot of good information. They have the statistics. There's a lot more than what I just showed you. Like they just have everything. Um, Bunny Bennett on YouTube, she is a male to female transgender individual who as of yesterday has been on four months of um, the um, hormone treatment, and you can kind of see how it's going, what's what she's going through, and all of that. And she does Q and A's, and you can talk to her. And the little things I gave out to you, Lorraine Cox is coming here to Wright State on December second at seven p.m. She's going to do a speech. I'm really excited about it. I'm going to go. And she's a transgender um, advocate, so she's transgender herself, and she's coming here to talk about that. So in conclusion, I really encourage you guys to learn more about transgender, and I really think that you guys should go to this Lorraine Cox speech. And thank you so much. Um, any questions?